Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say rejoice. Indeed, the Lord is near. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. You're very welcome to Mass today on the third Sunday of Advent, sometimes known as Gaudete Sunday. And with the wearing of the pink vestments and indeed the lighting of the pink candle, we know we're getting closer to Christmas and we hope that we will indeed experience the joy associated with that feast. So to prepare ourselves to celebrate Mass today, we call to bind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, Ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's Nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, for the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the poor, to bind up hearts that are broken, to proclaim liberty to captives, freedom to those in prison, to proclaim a year of favour from the Lord. I exult for joy in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God. For he has clothed me in the garments of salvation. He has wrapped me in the cloak of integrity, like a bridegroom wearing his wreath, like a bride adorned in her jewels. For as the heavens or as the earth makes fresh things grow, as a garden makes seeds spring up, so will the Lord make both integrity and praise spring up in the sight of the nations. The Word of the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God. My soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He looks on his servant in her nothingness. Henceforth all ages will call me blessed. The Almighty works marvels for me, holy his name. His mercy is from age to age on those who fear him. He fills the starving with good things, sends the rich away empty. He protects Israel, his servant, remembering his mercy. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Be happy at all times, pray constantly, and for all the things give thanks to God, because this is what God expects you to do in Christ Jesus. Never try to suppress the spirit or treat the gifts of prophecy with contempt. Think before you do anything. Hold fast to what is good and avoid doing every form of evil. May the God of peace make you perfect and holy, and may you all be kept safe and blameless, spirit, soul, and body, for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. God has called you, and he will not fail you. The word of the Lord. 
Alleluia, Alleluia. The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me. He has sent me to bring good news to the poor. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. A man came, sent by God. His name was John. He came as a witness, as a witness to speak for the light, so that everyone might believe through him. He was not the light, only a witness to speak for the light. This is how John appeared as a witness. When the Jews sent chief priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He not only declared, but he declared quite openly, I am not the Christ. Well then, they asked, are you Elijah? I am not, he said. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. So they said to him, who are you? We must take back an answer to those who sent us. What have you to say about yourself? So John said, I am, as Isaiah prophesied, a voice that cries in the wilderness, make a straight way for the Lord. Now these men had been sent by the Pharisees, and they put this further question to him. Why are you baptizing if you are not the Christ, and not Elijah, and not the prophet? John replied, I baptize with water, but there stands among you, unknown to you, the one who is coming after me, and I am not fit to undo his sandal strap. This happened at Bethany on the far side of the Jordan where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. The lighting of the pink candle reminds us that Christmas is near. Today is Gaudete Sunday and Gaudete means rejoice. The angel said to the shepherds, Behold, I bring you news of great joy, a joy to be shared among the people. Today a saviour has been born to you. Now joy is not to be equated with pleasure. Compared to our grandparents, but certainly our great-grandparents' generation, our tolerance level of pain and discomfort is very much lower than theirs. The present pandemic has put paid to the pleasure we get from traveling, socializing in the ordinary way, and nights out with friends. But it can have a salient effect of helping us take stock of the priorities in our lives. And many people have indeed risen to the challenge, not, pe not least people in this parish. Now, we know we can't live our lives without a certain amount of pleasure. But seeking it for its own sake is the, the nub of the problem. Hedonism has been described as one of the overriding characteristics of our age. The danger is that it can cause us to focus too much on ourselves at the expense of others. There is a warped sense of pleasure in sin and in excess. We can get pleasure at his expense we can get pleasure at her humiliation and even at their downfall. St. Paul, when describing the qualities of love in 1 Corinthians, says that love takes no pleasure in other people's sins. Those who seek pleasure usually find it, albeit briefly. What it lacks is permanence. It's like the soft surface of an unruffled sea, one brisk wind, and indeed it's gone. 
Pleasure for its own sake is the artful dodger, finding its home often in illusion and in a fantasy world removed from reality. But like December's sun and December's snow, it comes and it goes. I would also say that there is no true joy that is not the outcome of some struggle, some endurance, some contest. The farmer waits in patience for the seed to take root and grow. All his hard work, all his struggles beforehand, preparing the soil, fertilizing it, sowing the seed, watering the ground, ultimately pays off at harvest time. And one of the writers of the Psalms puts it like this, they go out, they go out full of tears carrying seed for the sowing, but they come back, they come back full of joy carrying their sheaves. Christian joy then is not a passing sensation. It takes nine months, for instance, before a baby is born, but joy is normally associated with a new arrival, the joy of new life. Now, shortly, we're going to have the crib here in the church, which is very easy to sanitize the crib. A homeless couple, a winter's night, a child born in the last place a mother would want, there is nothing here that resembles pleasure, but joy is the enduring sensation of the Christmas season. On meeting her cousin Elizabeth, Mary cries out, My soul rejoices in God my Saviour. And later on in the Gospel, and on many occasions, Jesus kept telling the apostles of his impending suffering, but that didn't rob him of this joy. For instance, before his passion in the upper room, he prayed that his joy would be indeed in them. What is this joy? The joy of total self-sacrifice. So let us pray then that the same joy of the Holy Spirit may also radiate from us this Christmas and may no one be allowed to take this joy away from us. As we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, we confidently place our needs before God the Father. We pray that the members of the Church in living out their Catholic faith may experience the joy of the Gospel. Lord, hear us. We pray for our parish community. May the members of the parish grow in faith and love and be a sign to the world of God's love for his people. Lord, hear us. We pray for the children of the parish. May the coming feast of Christmas bring them closer to God and his blessed mother and to their families. Lord, hear us. May the message of Advent be a source of comfort for people, especially those who are struggling to find a meaning to life. Lord, hear us. We pray for the sick. 
May they draw strength and encouragement from the people who care for them. Lord, hear us. We pray for all our departed friends. May they live forever in the presence of the Lord. Lord, hear us. We pray, let us pray to Mary, whose soul magnifies the Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. God our Father, listen to our prayers today and grant us the things we ask for through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your Church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, 
and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast. Through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. <laughs>